All right. Um, the first item on our agenda is with the school dis, uh, committee. Is um, the board of health is um, going to vote to move forward with the school committee's recommendation. Um, I'm making that motion, and I would look for a second so we can have a little bit of a discussion. Yeah, I'll second the motion. Okay. Um, just to give a little background, right now, um, uh, after speaking with Carl, um, the games are now pushed off until um, January 26th. Um, so uh, it's my thinking that we would actually push off voting for the games then until technically maybe the tw 22nd if our numbers go up or down and we decide to have an emergency meeting. I I know that would be some disappointment, but um, it's, it's really hard for me it, it, to make decisions so far in advance when we have such changeable conditions. Right now, our numbers look not so great because we have a couple workplace uh, outbreaks that have affected households. It gives us some rather high numbers, but I do feel like um, having chased down all cases in the town myself personally I know um, the exposure to the schools and I feel like um, the schools are right now safe uh, the kids as a precaution um, did not have practice on Monday and Tuesday and they are now for the rest of the week just uh, either doing having a virtual choice or um, out in the parking lot no one is even inside so I, deciding on the games, I would like to just push off, but I'm, I'm, I am feeling comfortable with having basketball inside. If we go forward with the games on the 22nd, if we choose to um, not go forward, then we'll have a meeting. So what we're saying is that we're pushing off the decision and then we'll have a meeting if we feel necessary. Otherwise it is, a, it is, Oh, go, going forward, but no spectators in the gym. I'm, if our numbers continue to get really better, then I'm willing to review, just, just like always, review um, seniors having maybe one parent or two, but I'm, I'm not comfortable right now with any parents, any spectators in the, in the gym. Um, if we do go forward with games, but I'm not saying that we're going forward with the games at this point either. Karen, I just wanted to do one point of correction of just because people are listening and <clears throat> the girls have been practicing since Monday. We held up on the boys due to um, due to researching a COVID issue. So the girls have been in the gym since. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was just, I just don't want anybody out there saying about the boys. I, was I don't want a false information being, you know, not saying you're saying false. You know what I'm saying? I just want to be yes. sure. Yes. Knows I'm sorry. I was concerned about the boys. So. Yes. Um, so now that everyone's confused because I've been rambling, uh, let's let, let's well, go. Let's answer questions. Yeah. Do you want to hear um, from the school committee at all? And yes. Yeah. Melissa. Yeah. I guess I guess I have uh, a couple of things to to think about. Is this Kind of can keeps getting kicked down the road closer and closer to this decision about uh, games. I'm not sure uh, if somebody could kind of weigh in on the risk versus benefit with games. If we're not necessarily talking about keeping these kids inactive, allowing them to play, but not travel to other communities and have larger groups in the gym. What's the risk versus benefit that makes that benefit of having intermixed communities with larger groups together worth the risk of transmission? Uh, if we look at a, a couple of things, uh, kind of raise my concern about this. One is that if you look at a large lab in Western Mass, we are seeing rates among kids under 18 going up fairly significantly in the last month. Um, uh, this is like doubling in the last month in terms of incidence rates. And if we look at a site like um, healthychildren.org put out by the AAP and we look at 
what risks we should look at when we look at whether or not uh, this is a high risk or low risk activity. Basketball's indoors, in close contact. If we're looking at games, they're gonna be together for longer than 15 minutes. In groups that are larger than 10, even though they may not be on the court, this is either inside in groups larger than 10 or on the bench in groups larger than 10. They're sharing equipment by virtue of the ball and traveling to other communities, all of which tick the higher risk group uh, with the AAP uh, guidance on what to do with youth sports. And the only real mitigating factor we're doing is face coverings. And I'm, I'm just curious kind of where the risk versus benefit ratio comes into play to, to um, make that decision. I, I'm gonna have Carl address that because we talked about um, you know, wiping down the balls and all the protocols are happening. So I would like Carl to address that to the group so people are informed. So in terms of protocols for safety, um, it's the balls will be sanit like it's not just masks in, in that sense. There, um, there's countless sanitize uh, sanitizer on the way in, sanitizer on the way out, locker rooms are closed. Um, in practices, they, they are, when they're not doing any sort of a scrimmage, they're, they're separated into smaller groups. Um, there's, um, geez, there, I, I think if I had bought sanitize, stock in a sanitizer company, I would be rich at this point. We have so much sanitizer going around and being sprayed, the backpack sanitizer. Um, so of course, not all the risk is wiped out by that, but um, we are, more than following what the MIA and EEA guidelines are in terms of sanitizing and spacing and all that kind of stuff. For example, um, when we have a team in the gym right now, um, the X's that we put around the gym for practice are, are 12 feet apart instead of six, um, just to you know amplify that to get even more space apart. Um, so that's in terms of sanitizer. Does that answer that question for you? I guess the root of my question is what's the risk versus benefit in terms of having these kids play in games with yeah. intermixed community? So is, is there that much of a benefit in having them engage in that, that it's worth the risk that it poses both to the kids and to the communities, including their families? Sure. So I, I guess I would say that's a question of, uh, what people believe or how people feel personally and what the board of health says. Um, I, 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 you know what I mean? Like that's a more of a, I, I guess a personal opinion because to some kids, they just want to be active and other kids, you know, for the, like the senior specifically, maybe they, they're thinking, man, this is our last chance to play basketball against these other towns we've played against. So it, it's hard for me to, to give a blanket statement on that with it being what I feel, a, a, I don't want to say opinion on the, on the, you know what I mean? Like it does. Yeah. So. I think it does different, different depending, you know, if you're, if you're a ninth grade versus you're a senior, you're trying to, you know, go to college and, yep. um, you know, you're trying to hone your skills and, and be noticed and, and that kind of thing. So the, you know, the benefit of being able to play certainly would, you know, be different for older kids than younger, but there's definitely a risk. I mean, there's no doubt basketball is probably the one, you know, the one sport that gives me a little bit of concern. And that's why I kind of felt, you know, if we, it's hard too, because, you know, seniors, you want your parents to, to see you play. Your parents want to see the kids play their last year and that kind of thing. So, but, but it is one of those things that if, if, if we can allow kids to play and, and, and hopefully have a game, um, you know, any way that we can reduce that risk by, you know, having less people in the gym watching, and that way, if we could get FCAT to film and have it live streamed, I know it's not the same, but whatever we can do to get through this to here would be great. But you're right, it is, it is, it's a tough decision. Sure. I mean, I, I think like when I look at this in the context of businesses opening up and people's livelihoods or kids that are more engaged in, in learning and, and those kind of things, I see kind of a, a clear understanding of what the risk versus benefit ratio. I'm not sure that I understand that there is such a significant benefit ratio to playing in a game with another community versus being able to play even in an intramural fashion. 
Well, I think Melissa, we do feel that um, there is some there is some concern because you're mixing the kids from different towns, and so what that's why I'm hesitant to vote to move forward with the games until we get closer to the schedule of the games um, to see what the numbers are in the other communities. I mean, right now, if you just look at numbers, Deerfield or the F South County has higher numbers and they probably will have higher numbers as the college kids drift into town than um, you know, the other communities in, in the county. As Darius had pointed out, um, last meeting, you know, we, we only play the schools in the county. So, um, you know, we're the probably the not attractive community, communities to be playing. So the concern would probably would be with us, but, um, and I wanna just see what our, our caseloads look like next week. Um, right now, I, I feel the kids are safe in school um, based, where our numbers are coming from and where where they are from but you know we need to have another opportunity to look at this before we move forward i think because there is a higher risk but i don't i don't I, the kids are in school for the most part so i i feel like having um practice and playing together is is okay um the hockey team has been very cooperative and understands that um, the high risk is really in the locker rooms and, you know, bathrooms and stuff. So I think, you know, they've been very cooperative. They've been forthcoming and um, issues. So I, I feel like the kids understand that if they want to play, they've got to pay attention. They've, they've got to be proactive in trying to keep the risk as low as possible. And I think they're motivated. I think us as a community are motivated to keep our kids in school and to allow our kids to play sports. Um, the numbers, community numbers are really looking good compared to what they were after Thanksgiving. I, I feel bad there are, our numbers are high, but it is directly related to a couple workplace issues. And um, I mean, it's out there, but I think if people continue to be safe and the kids are motivated to be safe and pay attention, then, then they should be rewarded to be allowed to play, I think. I think it's important the kids play. Carol, I if, they can, if they can safely. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously want everyone to be safe. Uh, um, I'm piggybacking on Missy. Miss, uh, hey, Carl, do you know what the protocol is gonna be at, at the other schools with fans? We know what we're trying to do with either no fans or maybe one parent. Do we know what's going to happen in the other communities that we're going to be playing? Yeah, um, as of right now in Franklin County, they they don't they are not having any fans home or away. Okay. Oh, so, good. Yeah, That's great. That was everybody... a great. That was a good question, Bob. I I hadn't even thought of that actually. I was more concerned about what was happening in our gym. Um, and, and if I get one more thing, just in terms that I didn't mention before, in terms of like um the benefits of games versus practices is is the normal the normalcy and like social emotional benefits obviously you know that it's tough to measure that but it's it's important to these kids um and then not having visiting fans is a huge thing because like we can't track it's so much harder to track like we know who the parents are of the, of our seniors so if we were to have fans you know we're going to know who they are and they're already in the community so, um, and the last thing I would say is the, the kids, like the kids that I talk to in class now that, that are signed up for sports, they, they're telling me how they, they're trying to be extra careful because they want this to happen. Um, so they understand, and somebody else started to mention this, but you know, they, they understand the, that I'd like to think that this is gonna help them be more compliant with rules at all times so that, that the season doesn't get taken away from them because of some sort of spike that they're, they're involved with, you know? So that was to finish the question, the answer to, to Missy's question. Are there any other? Carol, if I could jump in on, on what you were saying there. Um, I think there's, when you're dealing with athletics and being a big basketball guy, 
in my younger years is that there's a lot of difference between playing yourself and playing somebody else. It changes the whole how practice orientates because you're orientating to play another team. You have plays, you have offenses, you have whatever. It's not pickup. Um, and I think, you know, there is a difference between the two. But I really think we're, we're starting to come down where values are within the community and with individuals. I mean, I go by restaurants and I say to myself, why are people taking the risk to go out? I went past Friendly's in Greenville the other day. It was packed. I'm like, people are going to Friendly's right now? I mean, I love Friendly's. You know, you know, I love a good, you know, a good waffle fry. Um, but really right now, that's what the, the choice is. But people, you know, people are making a choice. And I know we're kind of stuck in that middle as a governing body of like, how do we put the values of where we think things are and apply them to athletics? You know what I mean? But I, there is a big difference between doing pickup and doing and preparing for a match. And even you only have a few of them, you know, I think it, it gives, there's a, a focus that comes into the practice there. That's important. So um, I'm not leading, you know, saying one thing or another absolute, but I think there's a big difference in what you're providing and what the kids perceive you're providing. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I know it sounds awful to, like I say, to put off again, you know, but I, I, I feel strongly the kids need to have be motivated to go forward and, and, and be careful and, and try hard. Um, and I want to give them every opportunity. So. I know uh, Damien and, and Phil, Phil Cantor have questions still. And I know there is a question uh, from Betsy Sobieski too, but I was just having um, the school committee members speak first and then reach out. Okay, go ahead. Thank you for seeing that, Trevor. Sure. Uh, Damien, do you want to shoot first and then Phil? Yep. Okay. I was just trying to find the unmute button. You got me? <laughs> yep, we got you. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just uh, kind of bounce off of what both uh, Darius and, and Carl were saying and, and along with what Missy's originally original question is, I think there is a difference between just practice and competition. And coming from literally this fall, my daughter who plays soccer missed out on competition this fall. And there was a big difference. She was not as interested in the game of soccer as she had been since kindergarten. And it was really, really hard to watch. Um, I hope she continues to play soccer and I hope this all changes next year, but seeing a difference with just intramural practice versus going to the games and having camaraderie with your teammates, it's a, it's a big difference. Now I'm not saying what the risk outweighs the benefit at all, but there is a dramatic difference between competition and just going and practicing for an hour. Thank you. Bill? Yeah, um, I, so the, the first thing I wanna say is that um, we as a school committee already voted back in December or whatever mm -hmm. to proceed with winter sports. So, yes. I mean, right? So we understand that the Board of Health can say, you know, no, uh, but just, I mean, the way that we're phrasing the whole issue, it's as if it's sort of an, in a vacuum or whatever, but technically it would be the Board of Health overruling the, 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 the school committee were they to cancel um, any individual sport. I mean, I, I could yep. be wrong about that, but um, the, uh, and then the, the other thing is that, and related to this, I guess, is that um, the whole issue of hockey, whatever, because I thought that, that it was determined that the hockey is up, sort of governed by the Greenfield Board of Health. Right. So, so I mean. But you can still, the school committee can still not allow the hockey team to play. And okay. so, but okay. I, I'm, I myself am saying, I feel like the hockey team is aware of um, the risks and, and they are staying out of the locker rooms that they've had, they know the protocols, they know to talk to us and um, and give us information and and abide by the rules. So, I mean, I'm I'm okay with the hockey, just to put it out there, um, just because I have had multiple conversations and and you know we've already had stuff happen, and the protocol they they abided by all the protocol and so I mean I'm comfortable that the hockey team understands. And that they're motivated. The kids are motivated, and the families are motivated to keep the risk as, as low as possible. Um, and but I feel the same way with um, basketball. I mean, Carl, 
you know, had to talk to the kids and say that no one was getting cut. And don't worry, if you don't feel good, don't come. You're not going to be penalized for not showing up. And, you know, we're, we're really trying to get the kids involved and, and be responsible for their actions. If you want to hang out with your friends, then you will not be having practices. You can't do that. This is, this is you know, you got to be motivated to be responsible. And I, I feel like the kids are. And we've put it out there multiple times in the community. We want our schools open and we want our kids playing sports. And so the community needs to pay attention. And, and I feel like they have been. Our numbers are, are reflect that. I mean, the case profile reflects that, not the numbers. The case flow, uh, profile really does reflect that people are taking responsibility and paying attention mm -hmm. and that do want school open and that do want sports to be played. So, I mean, I, I'm for it as long as it's safe. And, and, but, I, but I've had multiple conversations with Carl and, and, and the bottom line is if I feel at all there's any chance or Carl, Carl hears anything or Darius hears anything, Meg hears anything, then we're shutting everything down for a while or we're going out to the parking lot again or whatever. If there's any whiff of anything, no one he is hesitating here. It's just, we need to take, we need to keep paying attention and we have to really analyze what's happening every single day. And I, there's a huge amount of t work involved in that, but I, I really feel it's worth it because it's keeping our community safe and it's keeping our schools open and, and, and safe and, and letting kids play sports. So I, I, I don't wanna come down and, and say no, because I think there is a real motivation here to make it, make it, be, make it happen. Um, got a, I got another question, Trevor. Yep, go ahead, Bob. And I know Melissa go. too, and then I'd, I'd like to get to Betsy too at one point too. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I just want to know when do we think we're going to have to re re come back and revisit this? Do we have a, a particular day yet that we want to revisit this? Well, this is what I was thinking, Bob. I know this is really difficult, but I was hoping I made the motion to move forward uh, with the recommendation of the, the school committee's recommendation to move forward. We would vote to support that or we would vote to that we endorse that. I just want to have a caveat that if our numbers or we got stuff happening next Friday, the 22nd, I wanted to have the Board of Health have a meeting. That's Dave, Trevor, and I have a meeting to say we're not comfortable with going forward on the games. Right now, we're saying move forward as if we're going to participate in the games. But I do want to reserve some kind of five o'clock or six o'clock meeting, whatever Dave can make um, based on his schedule. Just, I'm not comfortable having the games and we're gonna have a meeting. We're gonna have an emergency meeting and the games are off on you know the following Tuesday um, mm -hmm. until we have better numbers or the situation is better, whatever. That's all. Yep, sounds good. And Melissa, you, uh... One more question then I wanted to go. Sorry, right, it's so weird. I should change it. Uh, I, my, my mom is the oh, only one who calls right. me Melissa. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, down the screen. <laughs> sorry, Missy. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, I, I guess I, I just have kind of a, a public health request. If, sure. if we can just kind of be mindful, both in the school committee and uh, a request for the Board of Health to be mindful of using the term safe, that when we're talking about getting 50 people in a, uh, in a gym together and wearing masks, that all of a sudden this activity is now safe, uh, that I think really what okay. we need to Okay, I saying, should say lower risk, lower risk. You're right. That, yeah, because yeah. I, I think that right. it's, I mean, there's all sorts of ways that people perceive these things. So if we are going forward and we're going to mix communities and we're going to have 50 people together wearing masks and we're going to say, you know what, we have no spectators so now it's safe right I, that is Lower a risk. misleading statement yep. that then becomes arguments for other people to to do the types of things that darius was talking about right. you know like now friendlies is packed and you right. know that these are the kind of things and everybody's going to make their own decisions but as a board of health and as a school committee it's important for us to kind of be 
putting forth things that really help people to make the right decisions so that we can continue to do these things. Yeah, that's a good point. Christy, you're absolutely right. And I apologize, it should be less risk. Yeah. Um, Betsy, uh, Sylvia SK, I know you, you wanted to make a comment. Welcome. Yeah, um, thank you. I've been sure. having a little difficulty with my phone. Can you hear me guys? Yes, we can. Yeah. Sure. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Okay, thank you. Um, I just have three points of concern that I'm hoping I can get some uh, clarity on. And I know you guys just moved the date again, but I'm still gonna ask just because I know it's probably, um, I know it's been spoken about before and, and it's on everybody's minds now. Um, so the community obviously has been trying uh, its best to protect its bubble, um, like the Halloween trick or treating at the end of the driveway, not gathering for Thanksgiving, Christmas, no soccer games this year, even though it was outside and modified. Um, I'm sure there's more examples, but uh, anyways, since basketball has been deemed a high risk, high contact sport, what would be the decision if our team was to uh, play a team either home or away that is from a community with a red status, uh, would the risk to our students in playing a team from a community that has these high numbers of infections outweigh the benefits? So that's number one. Um, number two, we put so much effort into the hybrid and remote school models while emphasizing social distancing and safety. Would it be an option uh, at this point? Um, I know, again, we've pushed the date back for both parents and players of these teams to have a survey on how they feel given the present uh, COVID numbers and concerns surrounding playing and traveling to other communities. Um, would practices only be a safer first step for our children versus traveling to other communities? Um, and then, and then uh, number three is, well, actually, I don't know if I should do BO3 because you guys have already decided to push the date back. Um, so. You know, I, I completely understand and support the importance for our children to interact with their friends and classmates and teammates. I mean, I'm a basketball coach. I understand uh, the importance of getting on a basketball court. Um, but, you know, we, like everybody is saying, the safety issue, and I'm glad Missy um, brought up a couple good points also. Um, I know for our family, basketball practices have been the first time our daughters have been uh, able to see their, their, some of their classmates and teammates since we went into shutdown mode due to COVID. Um, so I'm just kind of curious on those things. And I really appreciate you guys, all the hard work. I know there's a lot of thought process that goes into us and everybody's comfort level is different, um, but I appreciate you guys and uh, putting all this effort into the students to give them the safest place to start back into normalcy, even though it's not what they're used to. So. Um, those are kind of my three questions. I was hoping you guys would clarify, hopefully. Thank you. Well, I guess I would start by addressing the red. The red would mean, that means that there's a certain number of cases that are happening in that community per, um, you know, per a thousand, hundred, whatever they, they'd use the index for. The, what is critical is what's the profile of those cases? Are those cases, can you track those cases and what's my, well, it would be my comfort level in, 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 a, in that community's ability to trace their, um, their numbers and, and what those numbers are saying. Is it from a workplace and it's two or three households from a workplace? So that's how you got your numbers, like it is for our community right now, or is it wide, so widespread and or, or are you sending it? Is it being sent out to you know? Are you tracing your own, your own community? Like are you tracing, college, not me. Yeah, are you yeah. tracing your own? Um, what? Uh, your tra are you tracing your own cases? You know that kind of stuff. And um, it, it, it we put in a huge amount of hours in Deerfield knowing where our cases are coming from and making sure we've tracked down every single case and, and the contacts from those cases. So is it, it's hard, it, as Missy said, it's not safe, but it's what is the risk? It is far lower risk in our community than, than our status uh, or the number of cases that we have. So, you know, I, I would want to look at the game schedule. Um, that's part of, you know, I would follow up with Carl, is look at the game schedule, what community is playing when, and are they coming to our community? Or are we going to their community? How are kids being transported? Um, are parents driving the kids to the, to the location? 
and then staying in the parking lot and making sure the kids just come back out to the parking lot. I mean, the whole thing. Um, so Betsy, that would be the first thing. I don't know if Trevor, you wanna say anything or Dave, um, how we follow cases. Yeah, it, it is a little bit of a struggle because you know um, Carolyn is is certainly in touch with a lot of the other boards of health and you know public nurses that are that are doing a lot of the tracing in, in our surrounding communities. Um, so our you know South County, pretty good, and you're definitely in touch with Greenfield and, and all. So um, and Montague, but um, you know we know a lot better the as Carolyn said the makeup of, of the cases and why why a town you know why our numbers are high and. So we, we can kind of dig into those numbers and go, okay, this is really not school-based related. It's workplace and several homes from a workplace that really threw our numbers up. Um, so we still feel like comfortable. If we just didn't know and we just said, oh, there's a bunch of cases, we don't know where they're from, I'd feel a lot more difficult. But but it is a good point and hard to, hard to judge, you know, are those other communities doing that same kind of work that we're doing to and, and, you know, and we're just not bored of health of, of their community, so it's hard to tell. But we are definitely in touch. Carolyn's definitely in touch with, with a lot of the people in these areas that we'd be playing. So, uh, but not everywhere. So it's, it's, it is hard. It's a, it's a difficult area to have your eyes on every community. Does that yeah. answer your question, uh, Betsy, okay? Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Wolfram. Okay, uh, well, you know, I'm really torn on the issue because one, my daughters, my older two daughters, um, they didn't play their senior year. One of them wouldn't be memorialized in the good no gym up next to Betsy's name. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what the impact that would have on the family, but I think that children's health is more important now and with a new COVID strain, which is going to be hitting Massachusetts. Don't be fooled that it's not. Right. Uh, the chances of transmission is higher and it's hitting the younger population. So we really have to be diligent on this and unfortunately just take one step at a time until we can come up with a good solid number of low risk. I think the kids should just practice and not have games. Hmm. That's my opinion. Yep. Trevor, uh, Livia yeah. wants to ask a question. Oh, please do. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, school committee, yep. I had to figure out how to unmute and everyone in my house is running around, so sorry. <laughs> um, so um, a number Olivia, of things. You're upside down. Uh, I'm you're upside good. down. You're good. Yeah, we can see you. <laughs> her, her camera's on an angle. <laughs> yeah. It's because I have to use. The phone ah, there you go. Okay. Um, so a few things that are kind of scattered now because I've been listening to what people have been saying and they've been saying a lot of good points and um, I, I need to say that um, with, uh, I completely agree with Mr. Wolfram um, about, and I know I've said this before and I know school committee already voted and um, it's not up to me now, but that um, the playing of games while really, really important and um, <laughs> You know, I was in school when Betsy was the one put up on the walls, you know what I mean? So I, I get how important, you know, that is and what a difference it can make, especially in your senior year, to be the one who's not playing. For sure, I have a senior, I mean, she doesn't play basketball or anything, but um, I know how important that is, but it doesn't seem like the risks are outweighing. I mean, that it seems like the risks are outweighing um, the positives um, in that respect. But also one of the things for me um, that I've had to talk to, not so much my kids, but some other younger students about is the perception that is coming from this. You know, when we have said, you know, don't go with your families, you know, you're not sleepovers, of course, aren't okay. You know, all of those, you know, don't get together in large groups at all. And now we're saying, unless you're with your coach, you know, 12 of the people you've been playing with, 12 of your friends, and then it's also fine to take that group and go to another school and play with a whole bunch of other people. Um, I'm all for practicing, I'm all for getting the activity out, um, but my concern is the perception that we're giving because we're saying one thing 
and then we're seeing another. Um, it is, and that's that's definitely coming across to some of our younger kids. Um, and then lastly, so in the past, and this might be completely different because of the way crazy schedules are right now in the schools, but in the past, a lot of times other schools would arrive before school was out, you know, or when it was time for you to go to your um, basketball game, you know, you'd be dismissed early and you'd go to another school and you would end up at that school before school was released. And so what I want to know, because I know that Board of Health um, is in charge of like, you know, the buildings and, and shutting those things down and, and not so much if winter sports can go forward because we already voted on that. But um, if games happen and my children are in school, are they also going to be exposed, even though I chose, I would choose for them not to play a winter sport, are they going to be exposed and everyone in the school be exposed because other kids are coming in without school being over? Am I making that clear? I feel like I'm rambling and that's not being really clear, but I guess I'm wondering if people are gonna come into the school before school's over making it. Um, that's a good question, and, Olivia. I actually hadn't asked Carl that. So Carl, do you know if um, when the kids are supposed to be scheduled to come? Sure, um, I, I, I haven't been doing this job very long, but I don't know of any time that I could think of as my, an athlete myself going to a school when the school is still in session. Maybe a school gets dismissed early, the athletes. But um, and anyways, for this case, the games right now, JV would be at four o'clock and the varsity would be at 5.30. And the athletic directors have an agreement that we would not get our teams there for the games any more than 15 minutes before the start of that JV game. Um, okay. So the earliest the team would be there would be 3.45. That's helpful. That's excellent to know. Thank you so much because that makes a difference on whether I would be willing to send my kids to school knowing sure. that they could be put in a situation with kids from another school, but knowing that they won't, that that's that's very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Carl, I just um, wanted to know how are the kids being transported? I um, that I was assuming that parents would be bringing their own kids, but is that not true? It sounds like that's so not true. it did. I mean, from all the schools, it depends. It's different, I think, for each school. Um, I can tell you that for our girls program, we're going to have only a varsity team with the, with the numbers of kids we have. So we will have a bus option. But you know, if games get approved, we'll also, if parents feel better about bringing their their child to, to the uh, away game, that's obviously acceptable. Um, where in, in years past, you would want the team as like a bonding thing to be together on the bus. Um, so yeah, we'll have a bus and the option of people driving their, their uh, kids. I, I guess I would, I, um, for the 22nd, uh, I would wanna know um, what parents are driving and what parent and the number of kids on the bus. Because again, you know, we really need to look at the low risk kind of thing. Yep, and I can, I, can, I can have the coaches find out, you know, okay. from the players right. where, where they stand for that. Right, that would be perfect, thank you. Um, and we have a uh, comment, uh, Glenn, Glenn Dulet wanted to speak. I know you had your hand up, Glenn. Thank you. You're welcome. I think there's a lot of, you know, and you guys can stop me forever, wherever, but um, there's a lot of safety measures that are put in place going from practices to travel to, um, you know, and protocols put in place to protect the safety of the students, the, the coaches and, and the students, um, you know, I think, I think Carl hit a lot of the points, you know, and I wanted to just really emphasize a few, you know, within basketball specific, yeah, it's a high risk sport, but the modifications that we put in place, it's not just mask. I mean, in between drills, kids are hand, hand sanitizing uh, themselves to re reduce some of the uh, touching. They're, they're, they're cleaning balls. They're keeping balls to individual players. Um, you know, the storage of the equipment. Uh, I don't know about at Frontier, but my school, it's in individual bags contained uh, six feet socially distance. I believe at Frontier, they're not even bringing it into the building. No sports are using locker rooms. Transportation basically is, you know, um, dictated by, um, you know, what the school district and what the health health feel like is uh, is appropriate. You know, at my school, I stole it from Darius was getting the parental consent that they can travel 
you know, they can, they can, they, they don't need to, I don't need to provide transportation and that the parent will, you know, I, I, I gave them the permission to travel, you know, there's, there's ways to go around it and actually encourage that, um, you know, during the fall, the tracking that takes place, you know, is, is immense. And that's when we get to a game, we hand the roster so that the, you know, at an away game so that they know who's there. There's, and I, I'm glad Carolyn really dove into some of the metric stuff, metrics and numbers. You have the ability to, to look at what families this is taking place. Is it, is it school directly related? And what interventions that we have, you know, that we can put in place to keep that. And at all points, you can stop practices based off of an outbreak because that's, those are standards that we have to follow. We have no choice. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, I personally use my nursing. We have a number of cases. We have, you know, the expectation is if you're sick or, or ill, you notify the coach, you notify the nurse. That's a preventative measure and families take it serious. And I think the kids who really value this are really going the extra step outside of the school to make sure that they're not, you know, that they're being smart. And that's one of the things that I said to my athletes is every day that we're on the court or on the ice is a win. This isn't about wins and losses. This is about being able to participate with our, with our friends as a community, as a school. And that is huge for their social emotional well being. And then going out to a, a community to play a rival greenfield in a crowd of none because that's the safest way to do. The kids don't care about that. The kids care about being able to get down and play with their friends in a safe manner. Yeah, there's, there's mass, there's, you know, we limited rosters, you know, we, we did the safest measures for travel. There's so many different things that people outside of athletics, outside of the realm, and I can't even hit all of them um, that we're doing. And, 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 and I can say for my community, in my, you know, that I'm working with, if my daughter, and my daughter's from Frontier and as a senior and didn't play basketball and, 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 and you know, and, and lost out on softball last year and, and is going away, this is huge for her social emotional well being. You know, so much has been taken away from them already. This is not a normal year. And, and right now, currently, I would say in basketball practice, you know, a, a roster of 15. I think you're exceeding some of the standards that you're doing in high school right now. We have mass breaks. Yep. They go outside. They take their mass breaks. They're taking frequent breaks. They're hand gelling. Do you hand wash going into a classroom? I'd say they, you know, the amount of gel that you're going to go through in a week, I'm going to invest in gel, you know, and these are like what we said, are we reducing risk? Are, is, are we making it safe? We're minimizing risk. We're minimizing risk. We're, this is, this is, you know, you know, what we're, what we're doing for our kids, for our community. And I'm telling you, you know, I think there is, a, if you take that opportunity away, I think, you know, the kids are going to go outside and play pickup or go to the wire, do things, you know, silly. I mean, this is an incentive for them and an incentive for the community. Um, you know, in regards to games, you know, it goes back to the administration to feel what's comfortable around the health. You know, if you don't feel comfortable playing a greenfield and in past president in the fall, you had to stop and re because of, of an opposing school notified there was a situation and these were low risk, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Carl and Darius, maybe it was cross country. Nope, we had to stop that event. We're gonna reschedule it. We're gonna move it down the road because at that time it's gonna be safe. The, the communication between schools, you know, it was it's a must. It's because it's about the safety and that's past president. It's a small community, you got Greenfield, you got no, it, it's not like down here as that Sean would thought, Sean McDonald would say, we're radioactive down here. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're bigger numbers. You're intimate, you, ha you have the ability to, to really reach in and, and find out that information that's needed. And I, I just think there's so many things that, um, you know, that you're doing to keep this safe and safer, minimizing risk. Um, it's Less risky less risky, however you want to put it. And, um, you know, the, the coaches and, and, and the administration and, and the support of families, you know, that's the number one goal. So we can get some type of normalcy for these kids, you know, um, in this abnormal world right now, it's crazy. Yeah. Thanks. So, so the motion on the table right now, the Trevor second, 
is to move forward with the school committee's recommendation of, for winter sports um, with the caveat that we're going to review around the 22nd. Um, the Board of Health may have a meeting to review whether to go forward with games or not. Um, I just, I would like to make us have an opportunity or have it, make it clear that we need an opportunity for review. Um, David, do you feel comfortable with that? You're, you're muted, David. Yeah, I am. I'm available on the 22nd to meet, so. Okay. Okay. Um, Bet, uh, Betsy had one more comment, I think, and then I think we'll maybe take a vote. Okay, Betsy, go ahead. Okay, I think I'm unmuted now. Um, <laughs> I, I hear, you know, Glenn brought up some great points. Um, it, it's it's a really hard decision. Um, and we, I, I'm actually not coaching this year because, you know, for the, the best interest for our, our, my family. And I have two mm -hmm. players on the team. I have a senior. Um, and, you know, I've told them, don't take it for granted that you're able to walk on this floor one more time. I mean, it's kind of funny. Everybody's talking about my name on the banner, but Amelia's missing out on putting her name on the banner this year. She had a shot at that. And, you know, yeah. there's huge disappointments that go with these decisions. But, yeah. you know, as my coach used to say, a short term answer is is a, is better for a long term solution. Um, I, it's amazing hearing how all these precautions have been put in place. But as David said, there is a new strain coming and not that I wanna put fear in everybody, but you know, we have to be sending yeah. that message that we're gonna put their safety first. So yep. I'm glad that you guys are gonna put off answering. Um, uh, you know, I, I think it's good that these kids are getting in the gym, but I, I really stress, I've played basketball, I coach basketball. It's gonna be really hard to tell these kids not to, take, not to make contact. And you know, you're touching, you're sweating, you're breathing it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to try to make it so they don't, they don't get, uh, you know, they don't get sick. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess that's where I'll leave it now. Cause I know you guys are going to come Thank back you. at it and hopefully I can get my phone yeah. figured out and have yeah. a conversation with you guys again, because it, yeah. it's, and I know everybody's taking it seriously and I appreciate that, but yeah, it's, it's a disappointing thing <laughs> to have to have these conversations, but thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you, Betsy. Um, and I think we really would, um, even if we move forward on the 22nd, you know, as, as we have with making decisions with, with education and will we be remote or will we be in, in person, we will not hesitate to jump in and make a change um, if we feel the need is there. So I, I just want to say again, I, I feel very comfortable with Carl. Carl has been willing to um, answer all my questions. He's been willing you know he's he is putting the safety of the kids first and I, I i guess that's why i feel comfortable moving forward and working with them because um he knows that this is very serious and that we're trying everything we can to keep the kids um you know healthy um i guess lou, lou you wanted to say say something quick yeah i would just love to support betsy in everything that she said tonight and as a parent of a ball player um, I have made the very hard choice to disappoint my child by not allowing them to partake in even the practices because I just believe that um, this is not safe. This is not a safe scenario to have the protocols in place that we have been so sincerely upholding and then to suddenly switch it up and say it's okay for 25 kids to be in a contact sport interacting and yes they're going to sweat and they're going to breathe on each other it's going to happen hand sanitizer doesn't do anything about airborne particles it, it it's not you know these kids are are 13 and 14 years old or 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 even more scary the idea of interacting with other schools i mean i i cannot stress enough how much everything that betsy said touched me and that i think that you know, unless you have protocols and plans in place for how you're going to address families once COVID starts to spread because of this town's desire to play ball, um, I don't. I just feel embarrassed, and frankly, I am. What I am seeing tonight appears to be some form of insanity. 
that, that our COVID cases are rising, where a new strain is coming in, our cases are higher than ever, and we're suddenly gonna try to do something new inside the building with our youth. I, I'm dumbfounded and can't leave this meeting without leaving you with that thought. And I hope you reconsider the entire sports system this winter and think about doing something outside with these kids so that perhaps they could have some badly needed social interaction, maybe by having frontier sledding or frontier um, street hockey or something where they can be outside where we're not actually faced with this issue of, are we gonna take the risk of potentially killing people over basketball? Think about that, please. Thanks for your comment, Lou. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, so all those in favor? Dave Wolf, am I? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, we're gonna continue on with our select board meeting, um, but the school committee might want to adjourn. Yeah, thank please, you. I thank you everyone to... for your comments. I really <laughs> appreciate everybody's input. It Casey, is very I difficult. I wanted to mention or have Jen, if you're on the line, can you please schedule? Um, a meeting just so we have it on the board so it's not an emergency meeting we're already on it thank you thank you i need a motion from frontier to adjourn move to adjourn mr chair thank second. you phil second thank you phil judy you gonna do a roll call sure bob yes phil yep. yes phil yep judy yes mary yes damian yes Keith? Yes. Missy? Yes. Olivia? Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. <laughs>